what, would you introduce yourself both as a firefighter and also your field of study and uh, the fact that you do both things? Okay. Yeah. Uh, engineer Derek Irwin, uh, newly promoted uh, science fire station 170. Um, also a doctoral student at UCLA studying computational biochemistry. I got hired with the county in 2009 and I was happy. Here I am, I'm a, I'm a firefighter, um, just totally stoked. And in 2011, my brother was diagnosed with leukemia um, and a particularly aggressive leukemia. So here we were now as a family, uh, my parents, uh, my wife and I faced with kind of kind of our worst nightmare and totally out of the blue too. You know, my brother's not a firefighter. He's he was a film editor for the History Channel. And here I am, you know, at that point I'd been on the job five, six years. And uh, I'm flying to New York to take care of him while he's having chemotherapy. And he put up the good fight for three years, but he died on September 18th, 2014, three days after his 33rd birthday. It was hard for us. It was hard for all of us, obviously. And he was in great hands. He was at, at one of the best medical centers on the East Coast that specialized in treating his type of leukemia. And despite all that, we lost him. And for me, I made a decision in that moment that I wasn't gonna leave, I wasn't gonna leave this in the hands of other people. I was gonna do something about it myself. So again, I was flying back and forth, Los Angeles to New York to take care of him. And I never once had to worry about getting a day off of work. Everybody in Battalion 3 had my back. I was covered, always getting well wishes, always being taken care of, and I wanted to be able to give back to the county. I came back, things settled down a little bit, and uh, I decided to go back to school, and I decided to study chemistry. Because long and short of it is, um, we as firefighters, one of the ways we get cancer is from exposure to genotoxic chemicals, or carcinogens is another way to refer to it. And the idea was, the idea is, we as firefighters know that our brother firefighters that have come before us uh, that we work with now are faced with cancer um, at alarming rates and it's not well understood why. So kind of my goal of uh, my doctoral research now is to identify what chemicals in smoke cause cancer and why. And that's uh, what brought me to where I am today. So the biggest thing we as firefighters have a job to do, right? So we're gonna go do that job. We're gonna go and fight fire. But after the fact, after the incident is stabilized, after you're Again, taking off that turnout coat, putting on that brush coat, taking the steps to go through the decon procedure. Cancer is caused because there's some type of mutation that takes place in a cell. And that cell then starts the process of carcinogenesis and then cancer can take hold. So there's certain chemicals in smoke called PAHs. Um, and those PAHs uh, can be absorbed through your skin. They're fat soluble. Um, what happens is those PAHs can come along and damage your DNA. Um, now, your body has natural repair mechanisms that can uh, repair DNA damage, but it can't repair everything. And certain PAHs cause DNA damage that can't be repaired, and if that DNA damage isn't repaired, it can lead to mutations down the line that would then cause cancer. So the question then is, why is it that some of this DNA damage cannot be repaired, and what, if anything, can we do? To, to help the body's natural processes along. So there's a number of chemicals in smoke and on the fire ground that can cause cancer. And I think a lot of us thought uh, until very recently that as long as you're on air and you weren't breathing it, you weren't inhaling it, you're probably fine. But what we've learned is that a lot of these chemicals, uh, when they get on your skin, uh, when you have that soot on your cheek and on your hands, is actually being absorbed uh, through your skin. So research up to this point has shown that in five to six hours, up to 60% of the carcinogens that are on your skin get absorbed into your body. So we have this period of time after the fire, after the incident is stabilized, to do something about what's gotten onto our skin. And it doesn't have to be a long, elaborate process. Um, if you just take any measure to decontaminate your skin, whether it's with wipes or washing with soap and water just real quick at the pump panel, you're doing a lot uh, to, to minimize your exposure to these carcinogens that are on the fire ground that, that are absorbed through our skin, despite our best efforts. So no matter what decon measures you take on the fire ground, there's no substitute for taking a shower. Um, <clears throat> those PAHs, those chemicals that can get on your skin, you can only remove so much of that with a wipe. You need to use soap and water. 
And while it feels like this drawn out process, what you're doing is minimizing your exposure to those chemicals. Um, you're taking steps to prevent your own cancer diagnosis in the future. And if you're on that move up company that's covering for those guys who are taking a shower, you're taking care of your brother and sister firefighters. You're helping them to, to, to do whatever they can to minimize their exposure. And the hope would be that we all look at one another with, with the point of view of, hey, we're, we're helping each other out by taking this time. So everybody in our department is responsible for decon. That's the fire chief, the incident commander, the company officer, and the firefighter. We all need to support each other in this effort. Uh, we need to make it the smart thing to do, the wise thing to do, the accepted thing to do. I mean, here's the department trying to do something good for us, saying we have your health in mind and we want to support it. So if I could give you one piece of advice, it's to keep your family in mind. You don't want to skip decon. You don't want to treat it as a nuisance because you want to be there for your family years from now.